Hey everyone, welcome back to Exclusive Consciousness. This is episode 5, Sextortion, Silent Crisis. Now I'm sure a lot of people don't know what sextortion is. I'm sure a lot of people can probably figure it out if they really took the time to think about what it was. But today I'm here to put a spotlight on an issue that is very important, that is very real, and a lot of people actually go through it. In fact, within the last seven days, 107 people posted on Reddit about it. And the week before that, 145, making the total in 15 days, 252. Now, if we double that, that's 504 people in 30 days. That's a lot of people, right? In an overly populated world filled with billions of people, you might not think it's a lot of people, but when you really start to break it down, you realize there's a lot of people in this world that this could happen to. I want to show you guys some of the post titles that are being put out on Reddit on the sextortion subreddit in the last day. Help, the scammers are back. Please help. I just got sextorted. 17 hours since last contact with sextortionist. It's been a month and a half since I fell for a sextortion scam. Last week, I may have found the possible identity of the scammer on TikTok. I blocked them on there also. I haven't heard from them since. Thought she was feeling me until six months ago. Second time this happened. Attempted sextortion on me. They almost got me. Got sextorted three days ago. I fell for it. Two days after blackmail. I was on Omegle. Sent nudes on Snapchat. Blackmailed by mistress. It is so interesting to read these like that. Because that was all in one day. That was all within the last 24 hours, honestly. And that's what's scary about this issue. Because not a lot of people are talking about it. Not a lot of people know what it is. Not a lot of people have ever experienced it or have met anybody who's experienced it. I will tell you flat out right now, it is something that can happen to anybody. Any age, at any moment, at any time. Uh, I, I shouldn't say at any moment because you kind of in a way go looking for it. And people are purveying that, you know, scam. People are always trying to scam in this world. So it's like they're looking for that place where people are kind of feeling maybe vulnerable or for the first time in their lives or trying to outreach to something, you know, that they haven't experienced before. And people are always looking to take advantage of vulnerability and taking advantage of people who might not be so well versed in certain experiences. And that's how extortionists basically thrive. Throughout this podcast episode, I'm actually going to tell you guys a couple things, uh, especially some things that I learned from somebody who actually works on the other side, taking down sextortion is someone who works at a company called Scammers. They actually gave me a bunch of information that I'll later on read talking about the most common ways that these scams kind of take place. But first, I want to tell you guys just a little bit of what exactly this is. A person gets on Tinder or Hinge or Bumble or any of these, you know, dating platforms, or even Instagram, you know, you're sliding into somebody's DMs, like it's so common. And basically, this person seems rather normal. They sometimes will literally be the person that they're portraying. Most often than not, it's another person portraying a character. And you know, it's a scam. But in the long term, the person who follows or you know, taps on, doesn't know that, you know, the person 98% of the time doesn't know that. The way the scam works is basically, you know, you follow someone on Instagram or you add them on Snapchat from either Tinder or Hinge or Bumble or one of the various dating platforms. And the person now having, you know, a connection with you becomes more direct on their approach. Once they have you on the hook, they're now going to start portraying themselves as someone who wants to send naked pictures to you, wants to flirt really uh, differently. They'll even say it like, I know it's not that common that people send nudes to each other, but if you're down, I'm down. And that's kind of more or less how the scam works. You'll find these people who are just trying to find genuine connections and they're thinking, wow, I match with someone pretty or wow, I match with someone who I've never met before and they look amazing and they're wanting to send me pictures. And then they do, right? The same person you matched with ends up sending you naked pictures of themselves and you're going, this is unbelievable. Like, I don't, I don't normally do this, right? But, you know, fuck it, I'm going to just do it. And so that's kind of how the scam kind of takes a turn, right? So this person up until this point has pretended to be a fake profile, right? They pretended to be this character. And after you've sent them these naked pictures of yourself or incriminating photos, more often than not, these people will actually ask you to show them face pics. Like they'll say, send me a picture of your face or, or they'll ask you to do an act that involves showing your face while also showing your genitals. All these situations are very real. And these are all 
you know, I'm, I'm drawing examples from different people online that have talked about this stuff, you know, like people have been scammed through Telegram, people have been scammed through WhatsApp, people have been scammed through Instagram, people have been scammed through Snapchat, Facebook Messenger, everywhere you can think of, someone has jumped in on their kick. Kick back in the old days, I don't know if you guys remember that. Kick is still around, apparently, and a lot of younger generation people are actually getting trapped in this, like, even darker side of sextortion, which is absolutely crazy for to think about once I get into that. But at the end of the day, the person, right, now has these pictures of you. They, they twist it, and now they say, I need money in order to get rid of these pictures. They start asking for money, right? They'll say, hey, I have all your Instagram followers, or hey, I have your list of contacts. I'm going to send all these people pictures of you jerking off or pictures of you, you know, your penis or your fucking breasts or whatever. And it's like they try to incriminate this person in a situation where suddenly they feel the, the urge to kind of, you know, react and send money. And that's more or less where the scam takes its place, like right there where your fear is at its highest. This person is going to start asking for money because now they're going to go threaten your life. They're going to go threaten your future. They're going to go threaten your career. They're going to go threaten everything. They're going to say, I can put this shit on the newspaper and on TV and on the radio and all this garbage. And it's not true. They can't they can't do any of that stuff. The best they could possibly do is send it to somebody on Instagram. That's usually where the scams take place, more or less, if they do end up revealing your nudes. But everywhere else, it's like you really don't have much you can do other than block these people, right? Because at the end of the day, these people are just people, right? Human beings are on the other side of this scumbag scam. And, you know, the Lord will deal with them in his own way. But it's up to us to be able to discern these situations and go, you know what? I I shouldn't be doing that. You know what? I don't need to be doing that. I don't I shouldn't even have my focus be on this, you know? So for that reason, I'm asking you guys to be more vigilant, you know? At the end of the day, I'm going to be honest and say this happened to me twice. And what's crazy is the first time it happened to me, it was through a girl that I met on Tinder and we took it to Snapchat. She was like, "Snap me on on, you know." I was like, "All right, cool." I sent her a snap and then she hits me with why didn't you add me on Instagram? And I was like, oh, I, you know, you gave me your Snapchat. So I figured we'd just snap. So I had her on Instagram, not thinking anything of it. And then, you know, she starts getting a little crazy, starts sending me pics. And I'm, you know, like I said before, sending nudes to me is, is like nothing because it's just flesh. Like, it's just a part of your body. Like, it's just what it is. Like, if it's out there, it's out there. You know, this girl tried to take advantage of that. And she was like, she sent me videos of herself literally rubbing down on her body, doing some sexy shit. And I was just like, yo, this is hot. Like, I'm, I'm into it. You know, and 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 I think the first time this happened to me, I was 22, right? Imagine that, 22 years old. You know, you think you found a hot girl online, and you're like, damn, okay, this girl, this girl's trying to get real with me. Like, let, like she's clearly showing me the same body that I was seeing on Tinder, right? But that wasn't the case. At the end of the day, it ended up being some random ass chick who I had never ever met, didn't know anything about, and she turned it on me, and she was like, I'm gonna send this to everybody on your Instagram. She sent me screenshots of like 20 people, right? Immediately, as soon as she sent that, went to go block her. Cause I was like, I ain't taking any chances. Blocked her and immediately went private. And she tried to text me, oh, you gonna try to block me, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna still send this shit out to these people. And then at that point, I was like, I'm going to just block you on Snapchat. Blocked her on Snapchat. I never heard from her ever again. But I tell you, the first time this happened to me, the fear that I felt in my heart and in my spirit, that kind of panic when this girl was like, send me $200 at this Apple tag. And the Apple tag was like some random ass name, like Jennifer. And the girl I was talking to was like uh, Veronica. And I was just like, yo, this is clearly two different people, right? And that's when I was just like, fuck this. I'm just going to block this person and not deal with them. And honestly, blocking them is the best scenario possible. Like blocking someone and not letting them have contact with you almost eliminates the threat because that person can't fully go through the whole threat if they don't know how to contact you. You know what I mean? Like if they can't contact you, the threat ends. Now they move on to the next person. And here's the craziest part about all this. Last time this happened to me, I told myself, you know, the next time I have a show or a podcast or I'm doing something where I can talk about stuff, I'm going to talk about sextortion because fuck that happening to other people. Right. Like it it made me feel like shit, even though it wasn't my fault. I, I literally am the victim. It made me feel like shit. 
And I wouldn't want other people to go through that, right? I hadn't found that subreddit yet that I talked about. Like, I hadn't found it. So I was just by myself. I was just going through the motions. I think I ended up searching online, like, hey, what happens if someone on, on Snapchat, you know, gets nudes of you and then threatens you? And, it, and that's when I found that it was called sextortion. And I was just like, holy shit, this is like a real fucking thing. Like, not a lot of people are talking about it, but it's fucking real because it just happened to me. And then there was like a couple firsthand accounts of other people. And so... Eventually, I told myself, I'm going to make this into an episode of something, right? That was a year and a half ago before I started Exclusive Consciousness. So about two months ago, right, I was sitting in my room and I completely forgotten about sextortion, completely had forgotten about my own experience, had written up over 60 episodes, 70 episodes of different titles that I wanted to explore, different topics that I wanted to dive into, and sextortion wasn't even on the list. Imagine that. It wasn't even on the freaking list. Like, it, it, it wasn't qualifying into my top 10s, into my top 50. I hadn't even put it on the fucking list. So what does God do? He reminds me of my experience by making me go through it again. And what's funny is that the second time it happened to me, I was so much more aware that it was actively happening that I even told myself. I was like, I'm pretty sure you're being sextortioned right now, Luigi. I'm pretty sure it's happening right now. Like, you shouldn't send that pic. But I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to send it. I made sure it looked good because, I, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, fuck it. If it's out there, it's out there. At least it looks good. At least I approved, right? Sent it out. Homie immediately hits me back with, oh, my gosh. You know, I got your Instagram list. I got all this. This one actually goes farther than the first time it happened because I blocked him, but he had already created a group message with me and a couple of my followers, which is not what the first guy did. So the second guy was a little bit more advanced. He actually ends up sending one of my nudes out and starts counting down from 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54. And it's just like actively going. And my buddy Cameron's girlfriend actually was in the group chat and she hits him up and he hits me up and it's like, yo, bro, this is happening. And I was just like, yeah, man, I'm in it right now. <laughs> like it's all happening right now. And he was like, yo, bro, I straight up reported them. I blocked them, you know, and he was he he's he's such a hilarious dude. He actually said, he, you know what he said? He goes, I knew I was going to see your penis one day, but I didn't think it was going to be today. And I was just like, you are a funny motherfucker, Cameron. Like, you are a funny motherfucker. And that's why he's my writing partner. That's why he's my fucking best friend. And it just made it so much better hearing him and his girl talk about it. And they were just like, bro, it's just skin. Like, you know, it's just flesh. Like, she was even saying, like, it happens. Like, in Brazil, people do worse things, you know, and that's where she's from. And what also helped was calling my friend Christine while we were, she actually isn't going to be on another episode coming up, but I called her up like almost as it happened. And we talked about it and she just told me, she's like, and I don't want to just put her biz out there, but it helped me a lot. So I'm just going to say it, but she basically was like, yo, I had a whole sex tape leak when I was 19 years old. So your, you know, your penis being out there or your fucking nudes being out there or just like a a crotch shot being out there like is nothing you know like she's like don't even worry about it like someone leaked the whole sex tape without asking for permission or even letting me know it was out there because at that point it was like a perspective shift it, i realized you know what i shouldn't be thinking about this in this such a fucking world stopping way like in the end of the day people have done worse things people have worse things out there for themselves and i don't think anybody really wanted to go through this you know all the victims that i've read about all the people that i talked to over the last couple of weeks you know kind of researching this stuff i I came to realize that not nobody wants to be a victim. Nobody thought they were going to be a victim. Everybody just thought they were talking to somebody they were into. Like some people just were unfortunate enough to, you know, get caught up in the web of being scammed and it goes so much deeper. So in this next portion, I'm going to share with you guys some stories from Reddit. Just some people who decided to share their stories with me, who wanted them to be featured. So I met this girl on Facebook and I started to talk to her and she wanted to switch to WhatsApp, which is a red flag, but I was drunk and I didn't care. I FaceTimed with a woman and she was showing me her stuff and I showed her my face and junk and then she hung up on me. The next morning, I get a message with a video exposing myself to a little girl and she's getting naked and they said they want $2,000 or they'll leak it on Facebook. So I'm here paranoid, scared, thinking my life is over till I came across this thread with people like me who this happened to. I blocked them and reported them, but just the fact of me showing my face and junk for them to make it seem like I'm talking to a little girl. They said they'll show everyone on my Facebook, and that got me really scared. 
I don't mess with child porn. It's disgusting, but I feel nothing but disgust and paranoia. I thought about ending my life, but nothing has happened so far. If they wanted to leak it, they would have. I'm scared and feel less of a man, but I want everyone to know that everything will be okay. They prey on me. They prey on the weak and paranoid. I didn't pay. It's been four days since this happened to me. Tomorrow will be five. I don't care about my face and junk being out there, but I don't mess with child porn shit. So it just, this is another one of the layers, right? People will literally take the images of you jerking off or, you know, just a picture of your junk and just go, wow, this guy was hard talking to this 14 year old. You know, the person could have told you they were 24 or 25 and yet these pictures are being associated with this completely different agenda and it's just fictional, you know, and it's absolutely disgusting how people are trying to turn this scam. Like that dude was getting told to pay $2,000, like Holy shit. I actually saw a Reddit post where someone paid four grand and then the scammer came back again and asked for more money. And that's the thing that we've seen more and more and more and more. If you pay, they're going to keep coming back. If you block, delete, change your username, go private, hide your identity, that person will not find you. And guess what? If they do, if they release your shit, it's out there. It is what it is. Don't worry about it. Most people are going to be like, you know what? You were the victim in that situation. We're not going to put the blame on you. You know what I mean? And a big part of me knows that. And that's why a big part of me is just saying like, hey, just be careful because this shit could happen to anybody. You know, this literally could happen to anybody. And I'm going to tell you guys right now what the scammers lady said. She was so good and helpful. So she says, Estelle from Scammers here. I've been dealing with scammers for a long time. While I haven't been scammed, I've seen a significant uptick in incidences of sextortion. Like other scams, sextortion is another instance of social engineering, and it is extremely effective. Due to the negativity bias, people have rationally overrode themselves with panic more often than the promise of reward. The sextortion scam is unique in that the threats are occasionally credible with the scammers having a clear means to carry them out. There are generally speaking three types of extortion. The first is the most commonly seen one with the scammer asking for nudes then threatening to send them to the followers list. The second is similar but released to the public. This cannot have much effect though as most people don't care about a random post of someone's nudes let alone share the post with enough frequency that it becomes viral. Other means the scammers claim to have, like putting it on TV or on websites, are outright impossible for various reasons. Lastly, the scammer may ask for face pictures or just takes a public photo and edits in an incriminating photo or video. This is best simply ignored with a simple explanation sufficing in the rare case that the media is leaked. So this lady is basically saying these are the most common things to happen, right? Your, your nudes get leaked, right? Someone creates some fake type of picture where it makes it seem like this is you, even though it's not. And these scammers are literally going to do whatever is possible to try to get you on the hook for some money. And most people honestly will be smart enough to identify it if you already know what you're looking for. A lot of these profiles usually have a ton of followers, a ton of uh, following and no posts. And when you bring that up to the person, they'll say, oh, I just posted right now so that you can think I'm real. Right. And it's like, what the fuck? It just helps when you're a little bit more aware. Three of the biggest tips is block and delete, change your username and go private and never pay. You never, never want to pay a scammer if you pay them they're gonna come back that's the biggest thing that i've learned if you pay them they're gonna come back so don't pay them don't think that they're better than you at this game you already have the tools and the power to go and do it my best advice to you right now is don't take it upon yourself to send nudes don't if someone else initiates it and you've met this person in real life and you know them that's a different story if this is someone you've met for the first time online and they're asking you for nudes even if they start it even if they're the ones that send it first and it's the same girl matches the same profile that you matched with on another dating platform or the person decides to facetime you and they whip out a titty it doesn't matter because that person's gonna try to slam dunk a scam on you and they're gonna ask you for a lot of money so don't do it. Seriously, don't do it. Don't send a nude back. I love I love sending nudes. I think it's a very sexually playful thing to do with the right people. And it's unfortunate that that's been corrupted. And I know that most people down in their hearts don't necessarily want to scam other people. But what I came to find out in my research is that there are people who literally went to school for scamming. Like there's a, there are schools that are that are made here in America. There are schools around the world 
that are literally made to scam people. Like people went through training. People were trained how to sextortion people. When I got sextortion the second time, the girl sent me a screenshot of her Snapchat and it literally had eight other people who had sent her things. And I go, wow, that's eight other victims right there actively being scammed as I am. And I ended up blocking and nothing happened. I've never paid, but I know it's real and I know it happens to so many people. Lastly, I want to go into one last layer in all of this situation, which is the children. Children are actively being scammed in this way because they don't feel like they have a voice. They're being tricked even into deeper layers. For example, a child will send pictures to this person thinking, wow, oh my gosh, it's someone that likes me, right? That person will then say, look, I have these incriminating pictures of you. I'm going to reveal them to all your family. A child not being able to speak up about these things will then take it upon themselves to either commit suicide, which is very common, or hurt themselves in another way. But the third alternative is that this uh, child predator, this pedophile, will then begin to ask this child for more pictures and basically saying, you send more pictures and the threat will take another week to fully be laid out right and so the child not knowing that by sending more pictures you you keep incriminating yourself they will do it nine times out of ten is the most common uh, thing that happens and that's the saddest part about this whole thing is that these children don't have any idea how to stop it because they don't have control right this pedophile does this child predator does and that person is feeding on their fear their paranoia the fact that their parents will find out and they'll be mad, even though most parents will probably be like, holy shit, you're being fucking sextorted or, you know, most parents don't even know this is a real thing. But most parents should know about these cyber crimes because that's what it is. It's cyber crime. People are being taken advantage of online and it's happening more and more to kids rather than adults. Although it happens very frequently to adults, it's happening a lot to children who are getting on these platforms very young thinking, oh, wow, cute girl sending me nude pictures of themselves. Suddenly I'm being asked to pay $250 or $400 or $500, 600 $700 that I don't have. Yet they're saying, I'll give you another week to come up with the money if you send another nude, right? And then you get trapped in that cycle and then suddenly this person has like 80 you know pictures of you and this actually happened I, I was reading an article about someone um let me see if i can find it real fast in minneapolis a saint paul man has been charged in an extensive online sextortion scheme that victimized more than 500 minor girls more than 500 minor girls across the country announced u.s attorney andrew m luger according to court documents for approximately five years yu vang 31 created and used multiple internet applications and social media services including kick Snapchat and Skype. Uh, we didn't even talk about Skype. See, it's it's so frequent and it's so pervasive. It, it 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 doesn't necessarily stop at one social media site. It's it's everywhere, and it's just crazy. It's crazy the amount of people that are being affected with. So it's real. It's actively happening. And we need to try to put a stop to it. My biggest advice to the parents that are listening to this or for the people who might become parents one day is just keep an eye out on what your kids are doing online. I understand that there's a difference between overseeing and allowing your child to have some form of freedom, but you should at least communicate to your child that this is a real scam and this is a very real possibility that they could get trapped into. And you never know, you could save their life because they could be going through it right now without you knowing and they're not sure how to get out of it. And you could literally be the person that tells them, just block this person, delete all contact, and they can't hurt you, they can't touch you, and they can't do anything. Because as soon as that person leaks that stuff, they're giving up their own personal information up, their own personal profiles. All those things matter to them because they've established that following. And if that gets blocked, if that gets deleted, if that gets reported enough times and it disappears, that person has to start over and it's even harder for them to do it. So keep reporting, keep blocking, keep deleting. And most of all, just don't send nudes if you don't need to. And if it's someone you really love and someone you really trust, you just wait till you see them in person. Other than that, I think I've just about covered everything in this episode. Just be careful out there, people. This thing is very real. It's not a silent crisis anymore, but it's still actively happening without our knowledge. Over 504 people in one month probably over 600 if i really counted further it's insane the amount of people that are being affected by this every day in one day there was just about 45 people that were affected by this that's a lot that's a lot of people that are actively being affected not to mention the ones that don't report it on the subreddit it could be hundreds it could be thousands we don't know there are literally scamming farms out there designed to get you so don't fall for it
become smarter, become stronger. And most of all, don't be afraid because those people have nothing, nothing to scare you about. You're a victim. You're a victim. I'll see you guys next time.